Off the top, I'd like to uh, apologize on behalf of one of our pan panelists. He couldn't attend, uh, Vivek uh, Ramasubramanian. Uh, he was it, unable to attend. But I uh, still look forward to an incredibly dynamic talk today with uh, with our guests, Winnie Leung and Daniel Tran. I'll ask them to introduce themselves in just a second. Uh, today's topic is really about uh, establishing the link between digital payments transformation and Canada's uh, e economic recovery. Uh, in some ways, we talk about the economic recovery post-COVID. I don't know whether we are post-COVID, but I think we can talk about recognizing our response to seismic changes that are happening in our economy. There are uh, secular changes that are happening through the inflation, uh, with some international relationships that are very dynamic right now. COVID is still a part of it, but really, this is about making the most out of what you have with technology and really looking at finance transformation within a somewhat more focused lens and payments transformation, what we can do to actually become all more productive, more streamlined, more focused and more strategic. Now a little bit about myself, who am I? In some ways, I'm the person that gets between you and the real information, so I'll try to be short, but I'm the moderator today. I'm Senior Vice President uh, at Hill and Milton Strategies, uh, Canada's uh, uh, most significant uh, public relations and public affairs agency. Uh, we're an international firm with a pan-Canadian presence, uh, and I'm head of the financial and professional services group. As such, I've stood at, stood at the confluence of technology and, and financial services for some time, and really I'm your advocate. I'm the advocate for the audience. So as we go through this, I will continue to be grounding people on what's important. And, and how to make this something that's truly actionable. Because businesses are under pressure and the finance functions within them are under pressure to find efficiencies in cash flow, I'd like to challenge all of you to listen in a way that looks at what can be done. There's the myth of finance transformation that it's big and unapproachable. But I think through conversations today with our guest panelists, we'll understand what can be done to actually make payments faster, more efficient, things worth doing, and really give people within finance functions the chance to be far more strategic and focus things on things that are far more important. So I'm really the person that talks about challenging our, our panelists with, so what? Really grounding their comments in what is meaningful today. So uh, if I can, first let me welcome uh, Daniel Tran, uh, ADP at Interact Corp, and perhaps you could introduce yourself uh, off the top then. Oh, yeah. and I beg your pardon, uh, Vivek joined our group. So this is fabulous to have Vivek back into the group. So uh, it's, Vivek, thank you for joining. But uh, Daniel, if you could just introduce yourself briefly. Absolutely, thanks Rob. Um, good afternoon everyone. So my name is Daniel Tran and I am uh, the AVP of Client Solutions here at Interact. Uh, I'm responsible for leading our Client Solutions team. Um, and my team's responsibility is to really deepen and enrich, and enrich our relationships with our FI clients um, by supporting their current and future payment needs. Um, prior to joining Interact, I spent the entirety of my career in cash management sales, where uh, I was responsible for helping uh, corporate and commercial clients optimize their working capital by focusing on payments, receivables, and liquidity management. So um, you can really appreciate that this topic is very near and dear to my heart. Um, and I'm very excited for the conversation today. Vivek, perhaps you could uh, introduce yourself briefly and, and off the top for, for our audience. Uh, hey folks, Vivek Ramasubramanian. I'm a partner in, um, uh, in the... Can you hear me okay? Okay, I can now. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi folks, uh, Vivek Ramasubramanian. I'm a partner in Deloitte's consulting practice. Uh, my focus has been to help a lot of the financial institutions and corporates uh, around their payments modernization and modernization of associated processes systems uh you know the products and services that they offer uh centered around payments so it's really about helping them you know um find a way to leverage this modernization and build in efficiencies you know drive new opportunities for uh you know revenue as well as kind of support the various client journeys that they are in front of you know being specific to the various spaces so i've been in this space for over 10 years now and like really looking forward to the conversation i believe we are at the cusp of you know the transformation really and so you know it provides a really good opportunity now to really think about what's what's coming down. Sure. And Winnie, if you could 
introduce yourself a little bit, please. Thank you. Sure. Hi, I'm Winnie Lung. I'm the uh, Chief Financial Officer of Monero Solutions. Monero is a uh, tech, a fintech company that uh, is specializes in payments processing. Um, I'm responsible for the overall financial strategy, reporting, and treasury operations, and uh, we help uh, the company, um, uh, the business, support their financial analysis to support their business goals and any any sort of acquisition targets. Now, I've been with Monero for about ten years, and been part of the journey in watching the evolution of the payments industry over these past 10 years. And I've also um, led the finance stream team through this digital transformation journey, uh, you know, pretty well day once when I joined. And so um, can um, you know speak to some of the uh, work that we've done um, at Moneris to kind of help with this digital transformation. Oh, thank you, Winnie. And thank you, everyone. So just to frame the conversation off the top, uh, I was wondering, before we really get into the meat of this, what if in a sentence or two, if people could talk a little bit about what is this digital payments transformation and, and why should we care? So, uh, Vivek, perhaps I'll start with you and then we can pass it over to Dan and Winnie to layer in. Um, so let's just keep it brief right now and then we can unpack a little bit more as we get into the, the meat of the conversation. Yeah, let me just make sure sound-wise I'm, I'm coming across clear. Is that is that sounding okay? Uh, you're a bit faint, but if, if there's anything you could do that would be fabulous. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to speak louder than usual. So apologies if it comes across that way. Um, I think there's a, there's a, the opportunity is very interesting now, you know, and that's partly because of the pandemic. Uh, what it has done is really shifted the focus from, you know, traditional ways of doing things to more digital ways of doing things. And I think using the pandemic as an opportunity, we don't have to teach people to be digitally savvy as much. They are more digitally savvy now uh, in the way that they consume payments, in the way that they use payments, both from a consumer as well as a, you know, corporate payment or a corporate interaction perspective. Like it's happened naturally as a force function of the pandemic. And so I think that's where the foundation is starting to get into place. What I mean by that is the behaviors, the interactions and the expectations are already there. And so we actually have a really good sound footing and a really good starting point because the education aspect of it, we are well past right now. And, you know, when I think about the emergency payments, when I think about the various interactions, various, you know, clients, both corporate and consumer are interacting with respective businesses or the government or other corporate treasurers, those interactions are predominantly moving to a digital space. So I think that's what, you know, really gives us that opportunity up front. Super. Thank you, Vivek. Um, Dan, your two-minute assessment. Yeah, you know, so I'll take it from a different perspective. So, you know, digital transformation for me is um, is really the use of um, digital tools and payment solutions to help transform the finance function from, you know, its traditional function of being this processing center and back office support to more of a source of strategic insights. Um, and why we should care simply is because, you know, more now than ever, companies are focused on this transformation and seeing uh, and see it as being pivotal to their success in the post-pandemic world. Winnie, your, your top level take? Sure. Um, you know, I think we all think about uh, digital transformation, number one, is about efficiency. Um, it's I think it's more than that. I think you think about, um, you know, managing your cash flows. Uh, the more that you can, you know, help with reducing your costs, you can, um, you know, figure out how, what your cash flows are like. You can help with, you know, better managing your working capital. I think those are all really critical elements in terms of, you know, managing your, your, your company and your operations. And I think that's going to become more and more important as we come out of this post-pandemic world. World. Um, the other thing, um, and I think Daniel touched on this, is really about uh, being that strategic uh, partner to your CEO or to the rest of the business executive team. The more you can get data, and this is about getting data and how do you get that data faster into your hands to do the analysis, the faster you make the decisions and the better decisions you can make because they're based on data. So I think those are the critical elements in terms of, you know, uh, digital transformation. Thank you, Winnie. So that, that's great. So I think it's, we've got a, a bit of a, a press or an abstract from everyone off the top. But now to go a little bit deeper into the, the fundamentals, and, and really maybe build off of what you're saying earlier, you're saying that COVID has accelerated it, people are getting more familiar with this, at both the consumer and business level. But what are you seeing from a macro level? Is, is there an accelerated 
transformation right now? Is it is it a pull from businesses? Is it more of a push from consultants, or is it a bit of a mix of both? What are you seeing? Uh, I would say you know it's a, it's a, it's going to be a classic answer, Rob. It's 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 a bit of both, and and the reason why it's a bit of both is, and I can see Vinny smiling, and, and I'm sh I'm sure she has a you know she has an over view over here. It's a bit of both because you know when we think about all the modernization that's underway, that's creating new opportunities, tools, capabilities that are now gaining the prime time to bring forth you know to the corporates and the businesses. That wasn't there three years ago. And you know, at that point, it was more, um, you, you know, it, it was more hypothetical. There were assumptions being made, but now those are actually more real. You know, there are products and services there in the market that we can take and articulate what the benefits are and how they can use the different tools and capabilities to really advance the digital transformation journey. On the flip side, the pressures on the businesses and the corporates and the governments are real. You know, there are pressures around cash flow. There are, they are looking for ways to continue to be efficient. And when I tie that in with expectations in the general marketplace, the expectations in the general marketplace are creating a greater impetus, you know, on the side of the businesses and the corporates and the governments as well. So you're kind of seeing this healthy tension where, you know, before we used to walk in and try to explain what is this data going to benefit them, you know, through some of the interactions that I have, you know, within, within, seconds or minutes of the conversation, the discussion is actually, well, when can you get us this so that we can start to drive more value and benefit into our into our supply chain, into our processes, you know, reduce the redundancies and kind of make things better. Because a lot of the effort around efficiency today is about trying to figure out, um, you know, what uh, what's happening from a accounts payable perspective or an accounts receivable perspective. And I think with the with the understanding that there are better tools and capabilities uh, available or underway and are getting close, I think the impetus is, is becoming more and more, right? And so the value is there, the benefits are more evident than previously. And I think that's really creating, you know, a good conversation both from both sides rather than, you know, it being more one-sided in the past. Uh, super, and thanks for that. And I think that, that that's a good jumping off point for, for Dan is that, you know, we're looking at this, this healthy tension you were talking about in the market. Uh, what are you hearing from the market uh, regarding the importance of digitizing payments, Dan? If you could really start to explain for us a little bit the degree to which this is a priority for organizations that are looking for innovation and, and your role in helping educate the market. If you could expand upon that, that would be great. Yeah, you know, happy to. Um, you know, I, I think what what we're hearing builds off what Vivek has mentioned as well is that, you know, the market um, and organizations are more focused on digitizing payments now than they've ever been in the past. Um, and then also touching on the point that Winnie made, you know, a lot of this has to do with the important role that digitizing payments plays in actually helping um, organizations transform their finance function from this traditional role of being back office or process center to more um, of a role of providing strategic insights to the CEO. Um, and that's really being, that's really what's being identified as being critical to um, the post pandemic recovery and growth. Um, but, you know, a little bit of attention to your point, Rob, like what we're also hearing and what we've also seen is that there still is, we've made some great strides, but there still is a long way to go uh, in terms of getting the market to fully adopt digital payments. And there's a lot more to do on the education piece of what tools are actually available. Um, so, you know, to help confirm this last summer, you know, prior to launching a transfer business solution, uh, we commissioned research that uh, helped us better understand how organizations were feeling about that transition from um, or to digital and how far along we've come as an industry. Um, so if we could pull up the slides that we have, Dan. So, you know, what we found was, and you'll hear Celia here on the slide, is that nearly um, eight in 10 financial decision makers across Canada agree that, you know, finance transformation is needed post pandemic. Um, and we also heard from the same organizations that they believe that new digital tools were needed to aid in this transformation and help shift that finance function from these time consuming manual processes that are associated with paper-based payments um, to more value added activities, such as being a source of strategic insights. Um, and lastly, over half of these organizations also told us that this shift to a more strategic role would be important to ensure their, their future success in this um, post pandemic world. Now, what we also did was we wanted to see, you know, how far along have we come and how much more do we have or how much further do we have to go? 
Um, and what we found was that, you know, confirming what Vivek mentioned earlier was that commercial payments were already becoming increasingly digital in this pre-pandemic world. And the pandemic has really just accelerated this trend. So if you look at the graph in the middle there, um, you'll see that over half the organizations that we surveyed uh, told us that they significantly or somewhat increased the digital, their use of digital payments during the pandemic. Now, that's the great news. Uh, the not so good news is that there's still a large number of checks in circulation by not just volume, but also transaction value. And it remains one of the most popular payment methods in Canada. Um, and the key barriers to digital adoptions continues to be costs, technology capability, and lack of education information. Um, so, so really, you know, to me, the so what, you talked about that earlier, Rob. Uh, to me, what this really tells us is that, you know, while we have organizations that are more focused on digitizing payments than they've ever been in the past, and they see, you know, finance transformations being critical to the future success, there still is a lot of work to do on adoption. And, you know, as a market and industry as a whole, there still is a lot of work to do on the education piece, um, really on, you know, what tools are available today that are both scalable and easy to implement that can really help organizations along on their journey. Wow. It's, it's very insightful. Uh, thank you so much, Dan. It looks like, uh, Eric, you're talking about that, that healthy tension is, is there. Um, perhaps when we, as a fi senior financial executive, you could expand upon that. So what are your thoughts on these findings? And you're, you're someone that's tasked with running a function, but also being a strategic contributor to the business discussion. Um, perhaps give us your perspective from, from where you sit. Yeah, I mean, to, I mean exactly what Daniel had said. Um, you know, first of all, it takes a lot of time, um, you know, especially in this hybrid work. And I think most companies are going to be hybrid going forward now. So how do you deal with, you know, getting those physical checks? You come in the office, someone has to open up, you know, make a deposit and then start, try to reconcile or you gotta go and you pay someone, um, you know, you gotta enter it once first from the invoice, you gotta enter it again, just to make sure you got your check and you gotta put in the envelope, mail it. That process is very cumbersome. It's manual, prone to error. Um, and the other thing too, which is different or, or which is usually a challenge is whenever you receive the check in the mail, you don't know what invoice it's paying. So there's a lot of time that an effort being made by the finance teams to track down with, you know, and match those invoices with the payments. And so that's really not um, something that, um, you know, true valuable work. You can imagine, you know, if we take that time and just put it to analysis, put it to something else, and I think that'd be more valuable. So I think the limited transaction visibility, the manual processing are really the true major pain points driving it. But so that's driving the shift to electronic payments. Um, I think the other thing is, uh, you know, to think about is um, just, it just it goes back to the data, um, you know, using that data, if we had something that's uh, seamless and having that frictionless uh, ability to kind of connect your payments with your ERP system, um, and you know, you can figure out, you know, your customers or your whatever, or who's buying what, how much, when, that is such rich information that you could use to, you know, to you know, use it to make other business decisions. You know, should it, should I make a a, a different um, uh, a decision in terms of how I market it? Um, do I do a, a, a some sort of a program or something to kind of uh, you know to kind of increase sales for for a certain product or service or whatever it is? And I think that's what's really important um, to kind of keep in mind is the the data piece of it. And I think the other piece, and I think Vivek talked about it a little bit earlier too, is that um, the ecosystem has changed. Um, before I started with kind of the consumers and they're demanding that we kind of have seamless payment options uh, when we interact with business. But I think businesses are seeing that. And as more and more businesses are hearing about all the options, they're gonna to want to um, be able to kind of deal with payments on a business to business level um, more seamlessly as well. And so that's kind of, you know, brought lots of other options available now um, in terms of digital payments. Before it used to be just EFTs or, um, you know, you could use a, a corporate card, whether it's virtual or, or, or physical. But I think now there's different solutions available. And I think, um, you know, there, there's a lot more choices now for, for companies. Well, certainly that, that is a great job of rounding out what Dan was saying, really, really articulating the need. You know, I, I think that 
uh, you've, you've put it in real world terms. What does it mean? What, what is the need out there? And, and Vivek, maybe you could uh, give us some idea of, okay, how do we address the need? So now that we've established that there's an appetite, how can com companies implement? I know that it's sometimes seen as daunting or big and scary. How do people actually approach the, the topic of payments transformation? Yeah, so, uh, you know, it, I think the reality is it, it does seem daunting, right? Uh, because, you know, you're asking, you're asking companies and corporates to kind of change some of the fundamentals in which they've operated for a long time, right? And, you know, within Canada, we have become very efficient with checks, like super efficient, right? So it's, it's, it's a hard process to evolve and change from. Having said that, you know, um, you know, Vinny, you spoke about EFTs, right? So EFTs is, is a good step towards, you know, being more digital. It it has its limitations, but the reality is it, it then changes behavior with, you know, suppliers and buyers and, and starting to use more digital payments. Uh, recently, I was talking to, you know, one of the senior executives in, in one of the large corporates. And what they've done is they have, they've basically, when they onboard new suppliers, they say, they say no to checks. And so what they're doing is they're kind of creating that forcing function on the folks that do send and receive payments or to whom they send payments that they basically do not use checks for those purposes. Uh, and, and similarly, as a as a buyer, they are also not issuing checks. So I think you start with some of those behaviors and actually evolve them. I think the starting point is really trying to look at, well, what are the what are the various digital payment types can we adopt? Um, you know, and what is the efficiency it's going to give us? I think we can take some small steps. You know, there are obviously larger ERP conversations. There are larger system replacement conversations. But more importantly, you can move to some of these simpler uh, digital payments. E-transfer for business is a is a great example. It is uh, it is an it it is seamless to onboard into and start using because the usage patterns and the expectations around them are simple. I think if companies can start to experiment with some of these and you know start to not rely on checks that is a good starting step and then work through each process to make sure where are you getting the lift and efficiency and those kinds of things because if we think about a large replacement that is scary if we think about okay let's onboard one by one and let's evolve each process on the back of each of those payments i think you can start to drive at efficiencies early you can digitize early and you can start to improve all of the surrounding functions around that so that they they not they're not waiting for a long time to get those benefits and i think one of the one of the behaviors that i have recommended to to a lot of my clients is you know you've got to just stop the reliance on checks you have to stop the reliance on paper methods you know when i think about the government there is a big push on direct credits and i think those kinds of things really start to move the needle significantly I, I thank you. So you, you, you know, and I think what you're saying is that you can do it tomorrow. I think that the the tools are available and really grounding in it, and so that it's so people listening know it's out there today. It's yeah. something that you actually can do, uh, and and that's great insight, Vivek. Um, Daniel, just to maybe expand upon that, and and maybe this is something that um, uh, you can you can make real, but. What's the role of digital payments in finance transformation? Can payments be effectively the hero of finance transformation? Yeah, you, you know, absolutely. Um, you know, not only can it be the hero, but it really is the heart of finance transformation. And, you know, speaking about heart, you know, just hearing people, just hearing the panel here talk about checks uh, really warms my heart because this is something we've been saying for years in cash management. <laughs> But, uh, you know, touching on an earlier point that we made earlier, you know, organizations in every sector are under enormous pressure to deliver post-pandemic success. And, you know, treasury and accounting teams aren't immune to it. And they're really, really feeling it. So, you know, digitizing payments is the heart of finance transformation because it can dramatically transform the finance function as Winnie's described and really enhance operational efficiencies and things like straight through processings on both ends of the transaction. Um, you know, on the receiving end of the transaction, in the treasury world, we have a saying where, you know, cash is only as good as when it's applied. Um, and the reliance on traditional paper-based payments can result in that cash application process being a uh, bottleneck on the working capital or, or on organizations working capital. So by digitizing payments and, you know, introducing those enhanced data capabilities, you really have the opportunity then to automate the cash application process and enable things like straight through processing, which can now have uh, you know, a profound impact on working capital 
and really transform that traditional bottleneck into an enabler now. Um, so, so that's on the receive side. If we looked at the sending side, you know, we, we touched on it a little bit, but really transparency uh, is really lacking with the traditional forms of paper-based payments. Um, you know, from the time that a payment is sent to when it's received, uh, you know, treasury and account teams have really no line of sight into, into that whole process. Um, digital, digital payments really creates transparency by creating transactions that are secure, traceable, and recorded. So you can easily go back and identify, you know, who the money went to and see any of the data or memos associated with that transaction. Um, you know, the powerful benefit of that is having all that data into one place really makes it easy for the finance team then to complete all of that transactional process oriented work, you know, such as reconciling or researching transactions, responding to customer service needs, or even closing month end. So now you've actually, you know, through digital payments, transformed this finance function from um, you know, focusing so much time on these manual paper-based processes to now shifting that to this value, these value-added activities like generating the data, uh, the data insights and strategic insights that Winnie's spoken about. Super. So, uh, not that you put any pressure on Winnie there, but <laughs> we'll look to, look to Winnie for, for her perspective on that. So, if you're to say, what's what's the one thing that an organization can do to really get them going down the road towards digital transformation within payments. Uh, I, you know, I could kind of give you story examples of what yeah, what we did. I mean, when I came to, oh, to join Meneris 10 years ago, uh, we had, I don't know, stacks and stacks of checks. I remember having to go through every single one of them. I had to sign, I had to check the backup. And I said, I'm not doing this ever again. Uh, and plus the other thing was about paper. It was seemed very wasteful because we're printing everything out. We've got to staple it, then we got to file it, then we got a file room. Um, so, you know, one of the things that we first did was, okay, let's go, let's go digital. Number one is how can we reduce the paper? We don't have to print all these things out. So we started with just using Adobe to sign off and improving these things for payment. So that's number one. Number two is I said, okay, we got to convert these checks. Uh, I don't want to mail out. I'm trying to reduce costs. I'm trying to do efficiency. Uh, I'm trying to, like, people won't have to go walk to the printer, get things, and then staple it, then file it. That's just a lot of back and forth. So let's just, you know, convert to EFT and commercial virtual cards. And so that's, you know, how we did it. And we did it 10 years ago. So by the time, like, unfortunately, when the pandemic hit, we were okay to kind of go and work from home. We had no issues. The only one time we had to go in once a month because we still have certain um, customers and certain suppliers that still need a check. So, but we've reduced it to about maybe five a month now. So I think that's number one, um, that's you know easy to do. And I think, um, you know, both Vivek and uh, Daniel mentioned, there's a lot of other solutions out there now. I think a lot's evolved over the past, even several years in terms of different solutions that are actually even integrated with certain ERP solutions. So you can have that straight through processing so that you don't have to worry about what does this payment relate to? It, it all kind of uploads into your ERP and you can then um, save some time for your staff. Like uh, whoever's in finance, we all know that there's times that we're all under a crunch. And if we can save a little bit of time, think about that on terms of the, you know, the, um, the impact on your employee employee engagement. Think about that from a learning perspective in terms of what the finance of the future is going to look like. So I think there's a lot of other benefits besides that, but I think in terms of start with what's the problem you want to solve um, and just pick those small things and start adding to it um, as you kind of rethink of your processes. Well, I think that to really the wise of, of focus is important, that you need to have a goal and, and you need to uh, find a solution to achieve it. Maybe that's a great chance to have Dan or Vivek lean in. Is there anything you'd like to build off of what Winnie was saying? It was a very powerful metaphor of going through that stack of checks and that story that I can almost see it happening. But is, is there anything that uh, Dan or Vivek that you'd like to, to build on, on what Winnie was saying? Maybe I'll just... I'll just add something here. Some of these things are defined by um, uh, journeys and experiences today. You know, um, you engage with suppliers and buyers in a certain way today. So, you know, yes, there is a back end, you know, all the things that Vinny said, like couldn't agree more. 
but it's almost like even as you think about the problem to solve also think about what that interaction needs to look on the with those you know suppliers and buyers because if you have a better digital way or a front end way to convert those interactions you're going to use that as the starting point to then try to digitize the rest of the process because some of it is just old processes of well i'll mail you the invoice and then send it back to me with the check stapled on it right like yes. you can change that today and say no 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 we are going to have a different way of interacting and you know building those front ends and portals have become so seamless now there are so many tools available that actually there are easier ways to get started rather than really you know get into this daunting task of i want to digitize everything all at once because you know that becomes a very daunting task and then it consumes a lot more time and energy you will still get there but it's not going to give you the efficiencies on the way and i think linked to that the data part is a big changer uh, that is going to be a fundamental game changer in, in in my belief at least because today's payments don't have data with them tomorrow's payments they do have the data with them and i think if you can start to think about how you optimize those things back to vinny's point of how do you save time on the finance professionals well if those things come together you can automate more you know you can build a bot that matches data it doesn't have to be a large scary uh, you know technology platform it can be a very simple thing there's also lots of accounting software that are also emerging that are doing some of these things today with pre-built integrations into things like moneris and interact for that matter so all of these things are there you know i think again grounding yourself in the problem you want to solve and then starting to think about from the first interaction to the last bit i think there can be different ways of attacking this and bringing the efficiencies and the transformation sooner um as as opposed to kind of really thinking about this as a as a large business case that's going to take multi year to get you the benefits you know that's kind of the way i would you know i would kind of ground that back yeah you know i'll add on to that i think you know uh, Vivek touched on is, you know, that grounding part is so important because, you know, one of the biggest myths that, you know, we hear often in the market is that, you know, digitizing payments takes a lot of time and resources and effort when in fact there are many organizations out there, you know, Interact being one of them, who offer, you know, off the shelf solutions that can quickly and efficiently empower businesses to digitize their payments in a very scalable manner. You know, our own um, e-transfer for business solution enables those data rich payments that Vivek was touching on, um, allows payments to be sent in real time and does help uh, streamline the accounting process and you know accelerate paperless strategies while, off while also offering you know bulk and batch payment options as well to facilitate a number of transactions and payments at once. Um, you know it's a simple tool to use, uh, but it's simple but it's powerful, right? Because it helps simplify processes, boost operational efficiencies. Um, and, you know, the payoff is profound, um, you know, as we explained earlier, digitizing payment systems um, ultimately allow organizations to then spend less time on those manual processes, more time on strategic insights, and more time adding value in ways that can help organizations come out of this pandemic stronger than they were entering it. Super. Thank you so much. It's great. I, I see that there is a, a, a statement here made by uh, Louis Etienne. Uh, Talking about he was agreeing with the step-by-step -step approach, um, but that sometimes corporations underestimate the uh, request for information when switching suppliers. Is there anything that you would like to say about that specifically? Anyone? Anyone want to comment on that? Sorry, I think sorry, Rob. Was the the challenge was that sometimes we under organizations underestimate the. Um, it, it, he says that often corporations underestimate the request for more information received from the suppliers when switching to digital payments. Um, and that's something to consider when looking at a project. Is that something that you would like to address? Yeah, so, so um, you know, th that's the beauty of the e-transfer for business solution, right? Like it's, a, it's an alien-based payment. So you can from a uh, corporation standpoint, in order to send that payment, you really can, you really only need an email address, right? So those concerns about having to gather account information and store them on your system now becomes just a matter of, can you store an email address, which most of us have when connecting with our suppliers anyways. 
and maybe I just add to that too. Um, I mean, there's there's the virtual card options as well, and there's a lot of um, you know, uh, there's acquirers that will actually can store some of that the card virtual card information in a secure place, so you'll have to worry about the security or a safety of some of those card numbers. Again, that's the digital piece, and all you do is you know you have it once is stored and then there's the uh, virtual card option and then there's the connection the seamless connection with you know um dan had uh referenced before but that straight through processing that helps that seamless process into recording that into your um, books and records super and, and just to add on to that point as well too rob you know the the piece that you talked about earlier about efts is that um you know, when we think about UTs, the information that travels with that EFT payment now is very limited, which is why we have solutions like eTransfer Business, which provides ISO data rich uh, remittance information that can travel with that payment. So it allows that automation and straight through processing on the receiving side, You're no longer relying on emails or having to call up a supplier and say, hey, what is this payment for? Or cryptic, uh, cryptic, you know, invoice numbers that travel with that payment. You're getting full ISO data rich payment information now. Super. If I can, just I know asking extemporaneously, uh, Winnie talked about the change from the stack of checks, which was great. Um, maybe that'd be nominated, but what would be the most exciting thing that any one of you has done within the last 12 months to move the needle on finance transformations within your organizations? Any, anyone want to take that one on? Dan, I'll throw, throw the dart at you, a hot potato. I'm happy to go first again. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you know, um, over the past 12 months, so last summer, you know, I touched on it as well. I spoke about it at length. Um, together with some of our largest financial institutions, we launched eTransfer for Business, um, which, you know, we've, I've described here uh, as well, you know, building on the widespread adoption of the uh, traditional eTransfer service. Um, you know, it's funny, a lot of us are comfortable with digital payments in our everyday lives that that hasn't actually translated into the corporate space. Um, so eTransfer Business was created to address that gap where it was a familiar payment method that enables real-time digital payments to both personal and commercial bank accounts um, with confirmation of funds and data-rich remittance information that flows with it as well. So, uh, you know, I've described it's, it's, you know, it's scalable, it's easy to use, it's uh, the awareness is there in the market based on our own use and our own personal lives. Um, and that, uh, you know, that's been released last summer. So it's something that we've done in the past 12 months that we believe can really help organizations along their uh, finance transformation journey. Rob, I'll maybe touch on something that I've seen, you know, I haven't, um, you know, I, I know that various efforts are underway, but, you know, I'll take a simple example from a more personal context to to share what I've seen, you know, the the, the daycare that my daughter goes to, they switched out from, you know, what was pre-authorized debits into e-transfer. Um, and, you know, their, their, their explanation was very simple. Like, you know, they're able to actually track it better. And I was curious because, you know, I'm a kind of a nerd in this space. So I was like, why did you do it? And so for them, it became about easier tracking because all I do is I, in the memo field, I just insert, you know, the name of my child and I put the month. And they actually said it is easier for us to track and they are faster at recognizing which payments made it and which didn't. And they can actually follow up with the parents the next day or the day after. Right. And it's seamless. It lands in their account. Like it's a small, small example uh, and it's easier. It's a it, it is a daycare. Uh, but I think, you know, those are the types of things that, you know, I think some small medium enterprises can go and, and can be done today. You know, all of the large financial institutions, uh, and and you know most of the players in the industry already support in track e-transfer right as a as a payment method and i think you know if you can find some standardization on how to figure out what this payment is for just within your own little ecosystem as a business i think there are a lot of benefits to be had right away super um, Maybe just to add sort of what uh, we've been doing, I mean, from a, a corporate side, um, company in terms of solutions, um, you know, 
you know, Dan talked about, you know, Interact eTransfer and what Interact's doing. I mean, from a Monero's point of view, I mean, we're continuing to evolve our B2B sort of payment solutions as well for uh, for virtual cards and, and, and corporate cards. Uh, that's one aspect. But I think from a finance perspective, what I'm doing is using that data, um, the rich data for to and use um, machine learning and AI to help better with our predictive forecasting. One from a, a volume forecasting point of view, uh, the other one from a cash flow point of view. And again, that all ties together, but it just helps us um, be better and sort of predicting where our cash flows are going to be. When do I need to borrow? Uh, when could I invest more? How long can I invest more? So these are all things that are helping me with the data that we get um, and the faster uh, collection of uh, cash flows that I could use to kind of help me make better decisions. And, you know, I know interest is not very high right now, but, you know, every little bit helps. <laughs> well, and, and just before we wrap up, and just to come back to you, Winnie, uh, how, how do we sell the value of finance transformation to our senior leaders? You're being a senior leader yourself, but how do we sell this value? You know, I, I think one of the things that I did was um, really talk about um, how I can better help them and, and make better business decisions. And how can I help them? I think you got to put it into their shoes and help them understand why it'd be a benefit for them. Once people see that, oh, well, this, this is about me, <laughs> not just about you, then I think they're kind of more open to, okay, what do we need to do? How can we help you? So I think that's when, one of the things that I've done to kind of help sell that through sort of senior leadership team. The other issue is really about selling it to your own team form of finance because, you know, I think Vivek mentioned they're very, you know, they like, they like using, they're very reluctant to change because they've been doing it for decades like that. And so changing that mindset is a little bit different. And, you know, what I did with my team is really show them how easy it is. Um, and, and just like Daniel and Vivek said, there's solutions now that are so easy to implement that it's so intuitive that you don't need like a lot of technology to, um, to kind of uh, execute on it. Well, thank you, Winnie. And, and I want to thank this excellent panel. Uh, I'm honored to be here with you. Winnie, Vivek, uh, Dan, you've all been great. You've been insightful. And I think we've helped move the needle on educating the audience regarding why digitizing payments needs to be a priority. And that's the challenge for all the people who attended and who are listening. I issued the challenge to the audience right now, even if it's small. Legacy payment methods may be ingrained throughout your business and it's not always easy, but we've also heard that this doesn't need to be scary. It doesn't need to be like an ERP implementation. It's not a rip and replace. You can find, uh, as Winnie was saying, find a goal, start small. Do it today. There are solutions that exist that are proven, like e-transfer for business from Interact. Ones that can be easy, easily implemented for at least a portion of your payments, and they offer tangible benefits to your organization that will extend well beyond the payment itself, and ideally make better, happier teams within the finance function. So if there's any final words from anyone, that's great, but that's really the wrap for me. Again, thank you, Winnie, Vivek, and Dan for uh, your, your attention to this topic today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.